really much at all lately. Um, I'll be honest, mostly because I just haven't really come across a lot of YouTube content that where I'm like, hey, I'd like to watch that on stream. This one here I saw, I think yesterday or something. Um, it's a Willy video. And I just don't know that I've really seen any of his videos come out. So uh, recently, but this one's, this is why everyone called, why everyone called Wrath the, the GOAT expansion, greatest of all time expansion. And to be honest, I guess that's kind of the general consensus. My favorite version of WoW is is vanilla, period. And since we played now TBC and begun to play Wrath, that hasn't wavered. Vanilla is still my favorite version of the game. I I, I just love the way it's it's designed. I am having a good time in Wrath, though. Don't get me wrong. I'm having a good time in Wrath. I'm not sure what he means by the title. Like, this is why everyone called. So, like, that sounds like they're saying that previously people called this the greatest expansion. Maybe he means that they don't anymore, but maybe not. But I think one of the reasons why a lot of people think it's the greatest expansion of all time, aside from the, the numbers, I personally think Wrath was the beginning of when the game started to go into decline. Me personally. It was... The first time that I realized that I was kind of getting bored of World of Warcraft and I kept my account going until about six months into Cataclysm and then finally stopped playing the game. But I was getting bored of of WoW, um, I guess probably halfway or three quarters of the way through Wrath and just kept playing basically. It's not my favorite version of the game. Like I said, it's vanilla. Is it my favorite actual expansion, like post vanilla? I don't. I actually don't know. Like I know when when we were playing vanilla or playing classic, I would always tell people that vanilla was my favorite and TBC was right below it. Once TBC came out, it was very clear to me that I was wrong. Vanilla was by far my favorite version of the game. Once I started playing TBC again, I realized no, I like vanilla. I like. And it's got nothing to do with the rating or anything like that. It's just the how socially the game acts. Like there's no flying, you know, like basically it was easy to find people. There was lots of world PvP. TBC, a lot of that was gone. And Wrath, it didn't get any better. So honestly, I I just honestly I I felt like TBC was almost neck and neck with vanilla and wrath was below it once we started playing tbc i was like you know what i was wrong i think wrath is actually better than tbc now that we're playing wrath it's kind of like I, i'm not really sure i'm glad no i'm not even gonna go in to that subject because i know it's a sore still a sore one for some people that didn't get uh that blizzard made a decision that they made so we're going to watch the video and just kind of see what Willie says. Consistent at that since the start of Classic. After Rathos launch though, I... Uh, saying Vanilla was the best. I did play a lot of private servers before Season Master. I played tons of private servers. Um, and for some reason, I just remember TBC as being on par with Vanilla, but it's it's very clear to me it, right now it's not. Um, yeah, I've been totally busy. Holy shit, he's got 136,000 subscribers. Like... Five months ago, he was at like 75,000. This guy's been like not pumping playing out the game good all day, videos. Though, that's for sure. And though it's the early days into the expansion still, and it's only the second reset, a lot of the reasons as to why Wrath performed so well back in the day are really starting to show themselves again firsthand. And I have to say, I'm rather enjoying a lot of what this expansion has to offer. And so much of that has been tied into a very noticeable lack of restriction on anything that you want to do in the game. There's no Azerite or artifact power grind once you hit level cap you can level and go straight to any heroic dungeon or raid there's no time gated daily grinds for necessary rewards or upgrades there's no hard entry item level needed how many of you guys forget to turn in your dailies i i can't tell you how many times i've actually forgotten to do that i'm not gonna lie I, how many times i've forgotten to actually turn in my daily it's just like oh my god like the next day i'll go to actually collect them and it's like oh, i forgot to turn in this daily yesterday to join a party or for any bits of content and so much more We're also Here, here's another one how how are you guys finding the group finder 
How are you guys, like, never mind the fact that it's not teleporting you to the dungeon. How are you liking the tool compared to the in-game uh, group finder that, uh, whatever, the, the add-on? Boomer brain, brain, yeah, that's it. You don't like it? Is it better than the add-on that was being used in TBC, though? I think it's better than the add-on in TBC. I'm not asking if you like the fact that there's no teleporting to the dungeon. I'm asking about the actual tool itself. Although I have had several times where it's kind of weird. Like, I'll get invited to a group and then immediately removed. And I'm like, why was I removed from the group? Like, I have way better gear than these people. And there's not another warlock. And I don't need any gear in this dungeon. Like, it's pretty clear that I'm going there just to get um, emblems of heroism. Or doing the daily. And like somebody will invite me to the group. Like I'll I'll sign up for like certain dungeons or whatever. And I'll get invited. And then like 10 seconds later I get kicked out. And it's like, are you just trolling me? Like literally now I have to go and sign up and everything again. I still use the LFG. Is, do people actually still use LFG bulletin board? Really? It's like a six <laughs> closing time. Oh my God. I don't even have the GS uh, add-on. I haven't had uh, that issue personally, but gear score is insane. Yeah, people, they do, like, my gear score is really good. I, I'm I'm basically at, like, 4,000 or 4K gear score. So I don't really ever get turned around, turned away for gear score, but I just, um, I do find that there are people, I, I don't know that if I've found that people are picky about what classes they're bringing, because I, I think people realize that heroics, are very easy. If you're if you're a tank or a healer, you're probably going to get a group really fast. If you're a DPS, they're probably looking at what DPS you are, going, "Yeah, I'll take you. I'll take this one. I'll take this one." So, so playing I'm, an even more. I'm I'm honestly not finding the group finder tool too bad though. More casual friendly version of Wrath as well. Things such as the Sons of Hodia shoulder enchants and Tome of Cold Weather flying being account bound weren't added until 3.2, which is Trial of the Crusader. I can fly on my level 70 alt the moment they hit Northrend. That was one thing. I I'm not gonna lie. Like, I love classic. Don't get me wrong, but I was very happy to find out that my level 70 mage, my first alt, I could put epic flying on, uh, cold weather flying, and have it do questing at, with, an, with an epic mount from, from moment one as soon as I reached Northrend. Um, now, having said that, I like vanilla better when there's no flying mounts. And winter grass being treated as though it was a battleground practically means every single server always has the essence of winter grass buff, giving 5% more XP from months. Okay, here's something that is r ridiculous. And this is something one of my officers, officers mentioned. If you're going to basically have it so that every server, it, you know how it works, is if your layer, if this, like, if it's not even your server gets it, you have to actually be on a layer that won it and and then be you'd be able to access it. So you can be on a layer that did not win Winter Grasp and you have to ask people in your guild or whatever to get invited to a layer that has the Winter Grasp buff. Like that is the most ridiculous thing in the world. Why doesn't Blizzard just make it so that everyone just has access to it 100% of the time? Like, why go through the trouble of, hey, can I be invited to a winter grass, or a, a layer where we've got Vault of Acheron? Like, wh why, or, what, you know, like, invite me to the VOA layer. Like, it's ridiculous. Uh, anyways. At all times. TBC. I feel like when people uh, base uh, things off gear score, pumping raids start to suck. Just in my experience. Anyone that believes gear score is a good metric is inherently uh, going to be an aim in, in leading. So no point. Yeah, but Philippe, there's a difference between somebody with 4K gear score and like 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 1K gear score, <laughs> right? Like, I don't know that like if 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 we're looking for a pug for our raid, for example, and some guy comes up with 4K gear score and another one comes up with 3,500 or something like that, I don't know that we're going to look at it and say. You know, okay, we're going to take the 4K guy. Like, we're going to actually look at the gear. But it's to, like, make sure that we're not bringing someone that's got, like, 1K. Or the guy's, like, a, you know, he doesn't have prebis And he's basically just getting carried and all this other sort of stuff. But By comparison, had quite a few. That's what people use it for, is people denying people with 2800 because they want 3K. Uh... Uh... 
uh, when uh, the 2800, yeah, I mean, you can still have mages that have really good gear. I think you were the one that was pointing out that, you know, you could still have like the tier five mage set piece bonuses or whatever, and, and it actually still works quite well or something. So. You heard all you had to get over before you could really get stuck into end game. Heroic dungeons needed you to be revered with their associated reputations. But I mean, if people are being nitpicky about like 200 gear score, that's maybe a little ridiculous. I agree with you there. Many of the raids required very long attunement processes to go through, and for a time you had to do all of that on your alts as well. Before we go on, I want to do a quick shout out to today's video sponsor, Keeps. Keeps is an online subscription service that helps men keep their hair where it's Hey, it Findy! Findy! Findy, are you still here? Findy, you gotta watch this, man. Sometimes I skip this, but Findy's, uh, you know with personalized and clinically proven treatments which are delivered directly to Fendi, your door. He, he's probably got a code for you here, man. Or did you know two... Fendi, are you here? Dude, look what they can do for you. Thirds of guys will have experienced... Fendi, hashtag keeps your hair. ...some form of hair loss by 35, which I'm pretty sure is the youngest classic WoW player age, by the way. Wait, what is... Hold on. I mean... Is this really that bad? I guess maybe, I don't know lost by 35 which i'm pretty sure is the youngest classic wow player age by the way keeps keeps you able to keep your schedule without let get back to not worrying about your hair lengthy and time consuming doctor visits and appointments so whether it's prevention or stimulating new growth keeps has you covered and since it is wait it's a pill online subscription service you'll get easy oh. to follow reminders and guides to keep you on track towards your hairy goals hair loss stops with keeps to get was that your hairy goals <laughs> is that what it was keep you on track towards your hairy goals yeah, hair loss it... stops with keeps to get 50 percent off your first order go to keeps.com slash will e or click the link in the wait does this work for guys who are like completely bald Fendi, are you here description that's k-e-e-p-s dot com like advertising specifically e. for you many thanks to keeps for the sp sponsor today let's talk wow all right let's we talk should well. start from the start on the wrath experience so far leveling has felt a lot slower than it did in tbc the first time around if you're still leveling trust me when you get level 77 and you unlock flying things get much better and there is definitely an over reliance on vehicle combat and use x item on y thing type of quest i leveled with a guide so it wasn't a problem for me personally but the in-game quest helper still is by the way if you're leveling with a guide we've talked about this a lot on stream it does help there are several several good guides out there um the one i use is rested xp guide it is phenomenal in my opinion it is by far the best but I've used other ones like Jonah's and uh, um, what's it? What's the third one? That's pretty popular. I've I've used all three of them. Um, but the add-on in the in-game add-on for rested XP is unbelievable. So if you are looking to like level an alt or something like that, Zygor, that's the third one I was thinking of. But I believe I believe the last time I checked out Zygor's, it was like a monthly subscription. Um rested xp is you pay once for like level one the one to 80 guide and you never have to pay again and you get like the updates and everything like that and it has the most ridiculous features in the world like if you're out like looking for a certain like a particular mob like a name mob it will automatically update your slash target macro like it's ridiculous like little things like that that just make things super easy um, so anyways, if, if you're looking for a guide, if you're watching this and you're like leveling up, that's a really good one. Isn't available from Blizzard. And by the way, um, I do have a code. I'm not sponsored by them anymore, but my code for some reason still works. So if you want to use the code, it's, it's Aladar. Um, I'll leave, uh, you can just remember that just when you go to rested XP, I'll leave the link down below or something like that. But and I heard you that can use my code and you get 5% off, but I'm not sponsored by them anymore, but it does give you... It does give you 5% so off. As well. So I imagine there was quite a bit of going to Wowhead to... There are updates as you look through it through Slash Chart. Yeah, it's it's amazing. If you guys aren't using Rested XP, I'm, I'm not kidding you. You will use this guide and then you'll never use another guide. Figure out what you actually need to... Hashtag ad. Dude, I'm not sponsored by them anymore. <laughs> like, I was sponsored like by them when we did the Road to Ragnaros thing like way back when. 
And when I when I started leveling in TBC, I actually bought the guide. I, I was leveling a bunch of, I'm gonna level a bunch of characters. This is how dumb I am. I was leveling a bunch, I knew I was gonna be leveling a bunch of characters. And I was like, okay, I'm, I'm gonna buy this guide because I've got, to like, I've got like five characters I need to level suddenly. And I felt like it, this is a good investment. So I bought the guide, the one to 80 guide uh, because they'd already finished the one for Wrath of Lich King. And I actually used Bobka's code because I had no idea that mine still worked. <laughs> so I paid for the guide, used somebody else's code so that they would get like, um, um, uh, so that I could get 5% off. And I had no idea that my code worked until I actually like checked and found out that my code actually still worked. So they haven't turned it off. <laughs> you, you, you can still get 5% off. So use, use my code Aladar. There you go do to complete certain objectives because some of them are really bizarre. There are also a couple of quests which don't really account for the fact that say more than two people may be wanting to do them at the same time. I don't know what Horde has, I'm not leveled in Wrath as Horde in a very long time, but on the Alliance there are several quests with a good three minutes of roleplay between each oh. turn in that can't be completed in a party. If we could just change the turn in trigger to be an AoE around it, remember how you can skip City of Light in Dalaran by AFKing where the elemental finishes I, its Okay, path. that's one thing that I can't stand about Wrath is like all the roleplay. Like, it drives me nuts, all the roleplay. In TBC, but on the flip... Why can you not skip roleplay? Like, why Why is there not, like, a way to just, like, like click on them and interrupt it so you don't have to, like, listen to all the crap for, like, the 20th time? Side, the experience available in each zone is considerably higher than TBC. If you do full clears of quests in each zone, you will hit level 80 before you have finished Zul'Drak. I have done this, and I've only ran a handful of dungeons while doing it. I just moved my characters at level 68 over to um, Northrend, and I expect that by the time I finish Grizzly Hills roughly, I'll probably be very close to level cap. I want to find out how much bonus gold you can get from Sholazar, Thorn Peaks, and Ice Crown. I'll do a follow up video on that though. This means overall. Actually, you can sorry. I do Grizzly Hills and then Sholazar Basin. By the time I'm done Sholazar Basin, I will be 80, I think. And choose your zones a little bit more, especially the second time around with heirlooms. As it turns out, Zul'Drak, not terribly good for experience, particularly the whole Drakuru segment of it where you're running around as an undead. Or, for example, Winterguard Keep in Dragonblight for the Alliance has a lot of highly questionable and time-consuming quests. I could easily skip either of these or most of either of these zones if I wanted to on an alt and instead do a full run of Grizzly Hills, which is amazing and experience gained and theme, and then go straight into Sholazar, another zone which is very good on both these fronts. TBC had you do at least a bit of every single zone. The choice really came in on the final level or two, we could go to either Shadow Moon Valley or Netherstorm. It's no classic where you were going around the world all of the time, but there's just less zones to go around in general, so I suppose it makes sense. I also like the atmosphere of Wrath a lot more than- The zones in Wrath are so much better than TBC. There's, I, there's not a single zone in TBC that I actually really enjoy leveling in. I guess it, it, like the best of the worst is Northrend. I can't stand any of the other zones in, in, in TBC. Like I can't stand them. There's not one that I actually enjoy or think is decent. Whereas in, 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 uh, North, in Northrend, I'm looking at the map. Hold on. Uh, looking at the map now. Let's see. Um, I would say not a fan of Borean Tundra, kind of meh about Howling For Fjord. Absolutely love Grizzly Hills. I like Dragon Blight. Uh, Storm Beaks, Storm Beaks, Storm Peaks is all right. Shalazar Basin is like an XB, like like ridiculous zone. If if you're starting here at level seventy as an alt, start at Borean Tundra, Dragon, uh, Dragon, uh, Dragon Blight, Grizzly here, Grizzly Hills. Uh, shallows are basin and then basically finish up in storm peaks that, like that's what you should be doing and just make sure that as soon as as soon as you get into northrend and can get like look up there's here here's this isn't an ad i promise you it's not an ad and i actually don't have this add on i wish i did when i first started leveling there's a, there's actually a um uh, a pack that you can get for the uh, rested xp guide where it will it will take you through all the starter quests for all the reputations so that you can get the dailies out. And then basically every day that you log in, like day one, you log into Borean Tundra, you do Borean Tundra, 
and maybe get your reps for the zone started. And then day two, you log in, you do your reps, and then you move in, you know, you, you do Dragon Blight. And then day three, you log in, you do your rep, your, your, your rep quest or whatever, and then you go to Grizzly Hills. And then by the time you get to like level 80, you've got a ton of rep already done for a bunch of these places. You've got your tabards for all of them except for the Hodir one, which I believe is the only one that you can't get it for. But you've already got the quest stuff started. Like that's what I that's what I will be doing once I get like start leveling my alts from 70 to 80, which I haven't done. I've been working my tailors. But um, anyways, as far as the zones are concerned, though, like the zones are just way better in in Wrath. Outlands is terrible. Like, it's it's so bad. ...and TBC, which is purely a preference thing, of course, but the Howling Fjord and Storm Peaks especially are great, and everything about Ice Crown makes it feel like a real end game zone. It's got the final raid sitting is really there cool. ominously. It's you, full of you, quests. You know what? Is, is beside, uh, my favorite area in all of World of Warcraft is Black Rock Mountain. Is Ice Crown Citadel, like, sitting there at number two? as like a kind of a neat little zone area i, I like i don't know i i, I, the I love the way i found the zone looks. there's 140 quests you need to do and a lot of those are elite i even like the in-game music for it moving on about leveling though if you wanted to play an alt but you're still doing your main and you're kind of dreading it after how long it's taken heirlooms and flying from the moment you start northrend speeds things up so much not quite 50 percent that the joy I'd, i did just level like five characters from 66 to 68 specifically so that i could get flying on my tailors to fly around northrend and i've so five times recently i've had to level go take 66 characters go to northrend i know it's low level for 66 but i literally hate all the other zones in outlands so i would go to northrend and level them all in like an like two and a half hours or three hours i get two levels each and and then i'd bring them to uh northrend this journey's buff did levels of huge, but even with just the chest, shoulders, and regular flying, it feels around a 35 to 40 percent XP buff in total. And don't forget to play around your rested XP buff. But but having flying at level 66 and having heirloom gear makes it so much faster. Or two with a good route and rested XP, you can clear levels in well under two hours, no problem. More quality of life See, features. He, he's doing. He's using the same guide. <laughs> he just he just said it. He he tried not to say it before because it's it, it's not an ad, but he just he just admitted that he's using rested XP as well. It's really become noticeable during leveling too. Faster looting, profession item crafting for bandages or smelting, faster mounting, mounts being able to swim. You've got tabs from bounce and pets. It's all just very, well, nice to have after three years of dismounting in puddles and not being able to collect things due to bank space. Let's move on though, dungeons. He is right, like I, I, like some of the things that they've, the quality of life stuff, it makes sense. You'd think that you'd like it, but for some reason, I want to dismount when I'm in a puddle, you know, like, I, I don't know. No achievements like we've already talked about, and both normal and heroic are pretty trivial even at a basic level of gear. You run in, you smash your AoE buttons, and you collect a loot. Tank damage can be a little bit spiky at some points, but nothing overly complicated. Apart from You know, that I swear to God, when Wrath first came out, I seem to remember people at level 80 still spamming dungeons for level 80 gear before they would go into heroics. Am I wrong? In th I, I swear to God, when R R the first time Wrath launched, that's what people were doing. People were actually getting their gear from normal modes in order to go into heroics. I think that's literally how bad people were back in the day. That one ethereal guy in Violet Hold, who no one knew the mechanics about and he just one shot us all. Kite him away from the orbs, by the way. I've enjoyed the dungeons a lot more than TBC, and I'm about 99% sure it's down to how classes actually play, not necessarily the dungeons themselves, because the dungeons are easy. And I've realized something about World of Warcraft and I suppose MMOs and it was slightly hard back the in the day. Okay. If it's something done with pugs, I just don't want it to have any level of challenge whatsoever. If something is genuinely Yeah, you're right. I, I actually don't know if there's any dungeons that I actually like kind of enjoyed in TBC. Like I Like honestly, like maybe Ramparts because it was so short. But I'm trying to think if there was actually any dungeons that I enjoyed. I'm trying to think. Like, 
I don't think there were any. I don't know that I actually enjoy heroics either, but I, I, I think the one that I actually hate is Oculus. Like a Oculus, I can't stand. But the rest of them, they're all kind of just meh to me. But Oculus, I can't stand. Challenging, and it's meant for a group. I'd much rather have a consistent group as opposed to picking out people in the general chat. Reteaching people mechanics who could just leave after one wipe again and again just isn't a fun experience. Learning mechanics with the same group you play week in, week out is. Anyways, another thing about dungeons, similar to quests and raiding as we'll get onto, man were Blizzard desperate to show off vehicle combat in this expansion. I'd rather just play my character. Thankfully though it's usually fairly short, even the Oculus goes by really fast if no one pulls extra drakes. Dungeon Finder honestly is working at the moment, as mentioned in a previous video it when everyone's working. leveling it's looking really good. I've been playing a hunter as an alt and I've also been pugging heroics on it, not had any problems with- I've done a world tour who i mean pretty much gotten all my dungeons done i i don't know i know a lot of people are pissed off that they don't have the teleporting but i think the actual tool itself is actually not too bad of any of the groups or the people i've had in them bar a few people being saved a few times but that's it the dungeon finder should display when people are saved i gave feedback and a lot of other people did on this a while ago but here we are anyways hunter for wrath is a bit of an off meta pick they're certainly good but there's been a clear swap from people playing them in tbc to pass to them moving to other classes and man does everyone you know what i will say this there seems to be a lot less people playing hunters when i've been spamming chat um looking for you know people for our raid like advertising that we're recruiting i think hunter is like one of the classes that i've never had anyone go hey are you guys looking for a hunter whereas tbc i was constantly getting people asking. one want an agility user for dungeons i can get a group for just about anything in a couple of minutes as a pure dps class dungeon finder would have me sitting there for a good 20 on the low end to 40 on the high end minutes waiting Whoa. alongside the roughly 1 million death knights and paladins on the server of course if you are one of those 1 million death knights or oh my god you know what it's been so long since i've actually used uh um that dungeon finder that i forgot that it would just automatically pair you Or paladins it's probably going to be a make your own group kind of angle instead but would it be faster than waiting in dungeon finder yes almost certainly again it's still early but i just wanted to comment on it Raids, i don't, again, I don't no really ever have that long like even as a caster like I, I don't really ever have to wait that long like if i want to do a world tour i just post myself ready for anything and within seconds i get asked to do one i go do that one i i finish it if that group doesn't want to continue going on, I just repost again. And then it's usually right down to like the last three or four where I'm just constantly running dungeons. And then like, then like the last three or four, then suddenly it starts to get a little bit slower or something like that. But no real achievements. But I, I don't, I'm not doing world tours anymore. I, I've got everything. I'm just doing my dailies basically now. So I suppose you need to kill Saffron to go and do Malagos, but only one person needs to do that, so it's not asking a huge amount. Naxxramas just doesn't feel even remotely like the raid we did back in Classic, and it's very much down to how forgiving the content is now. In Nax Classic as a DPS, you pull any trash mob for a moment, and you could easily get one shot. Now I, 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 I'm, I'm actually pretty disappointed with how easy Nax was. Like, when we... Everyone was told that it was way easier than vanilla and that it was buffed during the ptr we went into like the first um the first section uh, and i can't remember which one we did first but it was like evident after pulling like two packs that everything was just melting and then we did the first boss i can't remember which the what first boss we did actually and we just destroyed it and it was like okay i mean we have a solid raid but it was just ridiculous how easy. And this is with like just pre biz stuff. And you very quickly realized, what's this going to be like in two months? What's this going to be like in two weeks? You know, like this is going to be a long wait of people like being bored out of their minds because how many people, how many of you have not cleared Nax yet? Is there anyone in my chat that has not cleared Nax yet? Like you're level 80, is, your, is there anyone that's in a guild that is actually stuck in part of Nax and you're not getting through it? If you somehow manage to pull off the tank through tricks and misdirection, most of the time you're not even you 80 yet? Live. So what's your excuse? <laughs> no, I'm kidding. 
So you're not not 80 yet. Okay, but for those of you that are in a raiding guild that you guys got 80 in like the first week or whatever, is there anyone that hasn't cleared Nax yet? Like that is, you're stuck on Thaddeus. Okay. Um, is it just people keep wiping for... Got to level 75 and, I, and you stopped playing already. How many of you have stopped playing Wrath? Like, are there, are some of you have already stopped playing Wrath? You're 74. Hey, Zeus, what's up, man? I'm at Dark. I am not even level 80 yet, but I have a wicked work to get. Okay, but you're still playing. You've stopped. So some, some of you have already stopped playing Wrath, huh? Interesting. Interesting. I have, I've noticed the queues are way lower. Like, on Wrath launch, the queue for uh, Ferlina got as high as eight hours to get on. And by this week, so the second week of raiding, actually it was the first Tuesday um, of raiding because it opened up last Thursday, right? Um, the raid was, it was already down to two and a half hours for queues. On a Friday night, I logged in at peak time. The queue time was five minutes. And I don't even know, I don't even think there was a queue tonight for Saturday. And usually that's a busy day. Like there's still lots of people that are raiding on the weekends. So it'll be interesting to see if there's a queue on Tuesday. But this last Tuesday was already down to two hours, two and a half hours. So we'll see what it's like. I think a lot of people now, they've gotten to the point where they're already level 80. They've already gotten their prebis and they're in raid log mode already. So I think the queues are just kind of collapsing. And as apparent with some people in my chat, there's people that have already stopped playing too. Um, Blizz went through and banned like 100,000 bots. Oh, this is true. And the servers are locked. So this is something that people don't understand. Blizzard banned a crap load of bots apparently. And because the servers are locked, like they banned those accounts, the servers are locked. They can't actually create new bots on those servers. I don't know if, if that was kind of like, they realized that that was going to happen, but of course that would happen. Right? So... I mean, uh, they probably did realize that was going to happen. It makes you wonder, like, why didn't you just ban them before? Like, you know, like, why did you wait? Live anyway, and this is with bosses and trash being buffed by thirty percent. By the way, we have twenty-five man, which offer wait, hold on, was it? I hold on, I, I want to listen to this again. Was it just health or health and damage? Managed to pull off the tank through tricks and misdirection. Most of the time, you still live anyway. And this is with bosses and trash being buffed by thirty percent. By the way, we have. Okay, is it is it is it health and damage? I sure hope it's not damage too, because they're not doing any damage. Twenty five man, which offers a little bit more challenge and better. They also destroyed a few of the lock servers as well, and those servers are asking for the lock to be lifted. Yeah, but how did it destroy them? Like, how, how do bots leaving the server destroy the server, right? Like, Sky Fury um, probably could be lifted, but then you're just going to be inundated with bots. Like, does that really help? I don't know. Maybe they should allow transfers to Sky Fury, but not create new account. I don't know. The loot and 10 man feels like you're doing ubrs or something it's like a big dungeon level of difficulty except you get some nice item drops in there as well speaking of loot things have changed on this front considerably as well back in the day people called them welfare epics in wrath because of how many purple items got thrown at you on one hand back in classic you had 40 man raids a very scarce loot and items which were huge upgrades dts viscag DFT, people remember these items, they remember their names to this day. In Wrath, you just get so many items, but you also get options. There's base items, and there always will be, of course, but there's choice. There are incremental upgrades. Loot is definitely less memorable, but a ton more flexible and better itemized. In terms of bosses, my least liked is probably going to have to be Malagos. There are frankly a lot of not terribly interesting loot pinatas in Nex, but you have to go all the way over to Koldara for a one boss fight where you spend about a third of it pressing 112 instead of playing your class not a fan on vehicle combat if you can't tell there's a joke in our, in our raid uh when we're doing this our, our raid lead is like i'm so tired of saying move left and so when we went in this week i was like hey can we move right this time 
favorite fight is easily Sartharian. We did. We moved right and we were successful. And impactful mechanics. And I told him, I said, I actually think it's easier to move right than move left. He's like, okay. And I'm like, no, I'm not kidding you. When I'm pressing D with my finger, it's easy for, easier for me to press one, one, two with with my ring finger then if i'm if i'm moving right and i got to reach over my my ring finger or if i'm moving left and i got to reach over my ring finger which is making me go left it's harder it's easier to move right by pressing d and 112 with my two other fingers i'm not kidding you it, you guys should implement move right move right and you're right johnny big thanks for the thanks for the follow man move right there's a lot happening there's tons of opportunity to improve how you perform from pull to pull in terms of positioning timing cooldowns and so on it's a fight where each player in their role can show up tanks on calling cooldowns for the breaths and positioning the drakes and adds heals on well just about everything there's a lot of damage happening dps on pulling resources getting ready for the big ad phases and when they need to burn down bosses and not in wait a second how many of them just got white the drakes and adds They've got one, two, three that are dead. Heals on. Well, fire just about everything. The firewall comes. There's a lot of comes. damage happening. DPS on pulling resources, oh, okay. getting ready nope, for the big add phases and when okay. they need to burn down bosses, and not instantly nuking yourself with a reflect debuff. The final phase of the fight with just the boss does feel a bit on the long side, but they did gig above his health to avoid full nuke strategies, so that'll be why. Blizzard have also announced they're trying out some more esports stuff for Classic Raids 2. The Undying event with two top Classic WoW guilds. I've no idea how this is going to go, but I've always thought speedrunning should be highlighted more in the Classic community. This is actually interesting that they're bringing in speedrunning. I think that's kind of cool, actually. It really feels like the guilds that want to do it are happy to just compete among themselves and have never... How much are you selling your noble cards now, uh, Johnny Big? How much are you selling them for? We've really been interested in trying to make an event out of it. I mean, if Liquid, Echo, and all the other retail guilds can run a Race to World First event, and it's hugely popular about three times per year, I'm sure speedrunning in Classic could be more of a spectator event than it's been so far. Next, Classic been more of a spectator event than it has been so far. Have they not seen the Race to World First on Twitch? Like, it's extraordinarily popular. So I, I don't know how many people are watching the uh, the retail version, but I know like the race to world first for Ragnaros was ridiculous. Like when when apes went in there, like way before anyone expected anyone to be starting, they had like level like 56s and 58s with them and stuff like that. And it was like two days before anyone else was expected to go. And it just kind of shocked the world. Like... Monkey News' stream went from like 500 views up to like 60,000 in like in like 10 minutes because suddenly word got out that apes were going in and trying to clear uh, Molten Core. I don't know if you guys remember that, but it was like the entire, like like everybody was talking about it. It went through everybody's discords, everyone's guild chat, like, oh my God, apes is, and everybody immediately started looking at their streams. It's really popular, actually, for Classic. Class design. This is the big one for me. Classic was janky and quirky. But the fact that they're having a tournament, that would actually be kind of cool. Like, have them all start at the same time and just go type of thing. And I liked it for what it was. Not well balanced at all, but you had things like resistance sets, old raid gear and dungeon gear was relevant for such a long time. You had the consumable stacking, you had world buffs with Chronoboon, they were much better when Chronoboon was in the game, and so on. TBC changed classes. Wait, what was this about? Oh, this is going to be, I don't like even Gear was relevant Chronoboon. for such a long time. You had the consumable stacking, you had world buffs with Chronoboon, they were much better when Chronoboon was in the game, and so on. I'm not even gonna, I'm not even going to fall into that argument. TBC changed classes and made the meme specs viable, but for me it didn't do enough to build on how they were designed and how they actually played when it came to raiding, and there were too few interesting classes to play. Wrath has done one or two things to nearly every spec in the game, and those are adding procs or some kind of executability or phase. Everyone now feels relevant on AoE, there's less gameplay centered around your mana bar, and it's faster paced. Overall it feels like a significant improvement compared compared to TBC. The ease of the current content is kind of, for me at least, overshadowed by the fact that, wow, my class is so fun to play. I just wanted- Warlock is definitely a lot more fun to play in, in TB, uh, sorry, in Wrath and TBC. I'm having a lot of fun learning how to do my rotation. I've kind of got it down now. And the first week, cause I, I wasn't planning on playing Locke. A lot of you guys remember, I was planning on playing Mage. 
So I did like no research on how warlocks were played in in Wrath. And then it was like the day before Wrath was launched, it was like, okay, I'm going to be playing a warlock because we can't find another one to replace me in the raid. So I started leveling my warlock and I didn't even really do any research in the two days or two and a half, three days that it took me to get to level 80. We started raiding and it was like, okay, I got to figure this out. And I didn't really do a lot of... This is terrible for me to admit because I'm like guild leader. But I didn't really have a lot of time to research exactly how the really good warlocks play. And since then, I've, I've basically had to be doing a lot of catch up on how the rotations work, you know, stuff like that. Like what I can let fall, what I can't let fall, et cetera, et cetera. So how snapshotting works as a warlock, like all sorts of stuff. I've had to like do a crash course in, in like the last week. So environment where i can do that i don't really care if it's super easy or not and we all know that Alduar and other raids are coming later too where they're going to have more optional difficulties for hard modes and heroics i think phase one will end up being quite short but i'm not overly in a rush to get to the next thing i'd certainly like raft to be a bit longer than tbc was in terms of a few other things you get to do at endgame achievements give a nice extra when do you guys think phase two is going to come out or the next phase like how short of a phase do you think this is some people think it might only be like a month, and I, I think it's going to be at least a couple months. Like, uh, probably a month and a half or something. I, I'm thinking, because you got, you got uh, Dragonflight that's, is it Dr Dragonflight that's coming out late November? Like, there's no way it comes out at the same time, right? Like, they, they did that with Nax in vanilla. They're not doing that again, right? Like, there's no way they're doing that again. This is Blizzard, though. I mean, but I got to imagine that they're probably, this is going to sound like a ridiculously long time, because of how easy the content is. But I can't see them coming out with a new, with, with the next phase before the middle of December. And even then, I don't think it's going to come out then. I think it's going to come out in January because the middle of December is too close to Dragonflight. And I, I know they did it once when they came up with Shadowlands, but I can't see them going, hey, yeah, we made a stupid mistake. We shouldn't have done that. And then just doing it again. And then I realized we're talking about Blizzard. So of course they're going to launch it. Dragonflight, whatever it's called, is coming out November 26th or 28th or something like that. So obviously the next phase, uh, Old War, is going to come out on like November 27th bit to do and some meta things to work towards wrath added tons of titles mounts pets i would achievement guess points and early so january not the though, biggest focus for me personally i think having things account wide would have certainly helped in that regard but they decided not to do that in the end professions feel in a decent place engineering is definitely over if they wait till jen they will kill wrath they may do this uh, on purpose so people don't scream we want wrath plus if they wait till january yeah, but do you see them launching it at the same time as Dragonflight? Like, I know I know they did this with Nax in vanilla, and people were pissed off. Do you see them doing that again? Like, and, and I don't see them doing it, like, during Christmas. I don't even see that if Dragonflight comes out, like, the last week of November, do you honestly think that they're going to come out with Old War, like, two weeks after Dragonflight, three weeks after Dragonflight? I would be stunned if they came out. I think they will deliberately. I'm, I'm, here, think about it this way, Lightbeard. I think they will deliberately come out with um, uh, Wrath like two months after Dragon Blight. Do you know why? Because you'll get bored with Wrath. And what happens if you get bored with Wrath? You might try Dragon Flight. And what happens when more people try Dragon Flight? Maybe more people like it. And maybe more people start buying mounts off the store and all this other stuff. The more I think about it, the more it actually makes sense to me that they're probably not going to launch Alduar until at least a month and a half after Dragonflight because by that point, people are going to be getting bored and they'd be like, man, we've been doing, we've been doing Nax for like two months now. This is too easy. I'm getting bored. What can I do? And then they're like, oh yeah, there's Dragonflight. Right? It makes, it actually makes sense that they will wait extra because people will get bored and then they will try dragon flight. It actually makes sense for them to do that. But it's also really fun. So who's complaining? Gathering. Yeah, I'm, I'm getting bored. I'm gonna go play. Fly, fly. Yeah, I mean, I guess that is another option, but 
I think I think honestly they're going to hope that there's a, a lot of people that like Dragonflight and people are saying, hey, I'm having a great time in Dragonflight. Like they say, for every expansion for the first week of the expansion, the first week of Shadowlands, the first two weeks of Shadowlands, all I heard were friends of mine who were classic Andes say, hey, this is actually a pretty decent expansion. So I started leveling a mage up and got a mage to like level 25. And then after like two weeks, three weeks, they were like, now this sucks. And everybody stopped playing. But I think they're hoping that a lot of people that are getting bored because Old War isn't coming out in a month and they're getting bored of Nats so that they might say, hey, you know what? I'm going to go try Dragonflight. I'd rather play New World than Retail. So would I. But as a World of Warcraft streamer, guess what? As a World of Warcraft streamer, I might try Dragonflight because my viewership can't stand New World. I like New World, but my viewers can't stand it. So a lot of them might be like, hey, are you going to try? You know how many people have had to ask me, are you going to try Dragonflight? And I just, I have no interest in it. But I might try it, especially if, you know, like the middle of December rolls around. We're talking two months from now, okay? Like the game just came out, keep in mind. Like what was it, a week and a half ago? Two weeks ago? What, what day? Two weeks ago? So to, to think that, okay, in two months or three months, first phase being three months, that's pretty normal, actually, considering the you know classic and TBC, the first phase being three months. So if it came out, um, you know, like just a couple of weeks ago, it kind of makes sense that the first phase is going to end in early January. So by that point, what I mean, I'll have leveled up my Warlock. I've now leveled up, for those of you that haven't been watching the last few days, I've leveled up a total of nine characters from 66. All I've made, I've made sure that a total of nine of my characters are now from 68 or sorry, 66 to 68 so that I can get them all cold weather flying and tailoring for all my tailors. Next on my list is to level up my alt, which is going to be either probably a mage um, or maybe uh, a healer. And that'll be done in like a week. I've got like another two and a half months, two, two whatever, two, two and a half months of what the hell am I going to do? And then suddenly Dragonflight comes out and I'm sitting here going, what the hell am I going to do? I've already leveled up my character. They've all got pre-bits. All my tailors are done. What am I going to do? Oh, wait, Dragonflight's here for me to try. And I think there's going to be a lot of other people that are in the same boat. You know? I mean, how many of you have tried literally every expansion? You've hated them all, but you've tried every expansion. Shadow Shadowlands was the first expansion I never, ever bought. Never, ever bought it. And there are still lots of people, like guys that I can, like, that tell me that they are through and through generally just classic uh, players. They, they like the classic version of the game better, but they've tried every expansion. And I have no doubt that by the time Dragonflight comes out, a lot of people are going to be getting bored of Nax. And I think Blizzard intentionally will do this so that those people that are getting bored with Nax always try the expansions, they will try the expansions in hope that they really like the expansion because Blizzard is making more money per person. Keep in mind, I'm not saying there's more people playing retail than there are playing vanilla or, play, or sorry, playing um, classic because it's been proven um, like with videos that Stay Safe has done and other people have done that there are more people actually currently playing. This is even before Wrath came out. Like I'm talking in TBC during Sunwell. More people were playing Sunwell and and playing TBC than playing retail. And if you're a retail player and, and that hurts your feelings, I'm I'm sorry, but it's just it's just the way it is. Having said that, though, Blizzard makes more money off of retail. They always have because of the shop. So if they can get people to be bored of Nax or bored of this phase enough to where they're not going to quit the game, but they're going to try Dragonflight because they just want something different, a different experience. That's what Blizzard wants. They they're hoping that people try try Dragonflight and then go and um, you know they enjoy it, stick around and buy some mounts off the store. That's that's where I see this going. Ring is very good, consistent gold per hour, and most professions have fairly comparable. Shadowlands had a great launch. It was good. Uh, then the Nerve Bats came through, and the Blizzard destroyed the Raider RBG, uh, Raider BGs and a whole bunch of bad decisions. 
I thought it looked fantastic. Like, I was so pumped to try a Fire Mage. I thought it looked fantastic. Bonuses between them. Every profession also has ways to generate gold and not just be level it to X amount for the bonus and ignore it for the rest of the expansion. Buff tailors have their cooldowns, jewel crafters have the ring. <laughs> Cloth tailors have their cooldowns. I have nine tailors, by the way. And cutting gems, and we'll have epic gems to look forward to later. Enchanting seems like super free money at the moment. You just take an enchant and post it on your auction house, and people will buy it for a markup because it's convenient. Even engineering has the epic guns and ammo, which can turn a profit. I'm not sure how long that's going to last for, though. PvP is also fairly fast to get into, with reduced honor costs on gear, and even some new gear, which has been added into the game. Wrathers also see more specialization and class diversity so far as well. There's certainly a few overpowered outliers but it's better than tbc overall it's very much what i expected it to be in terms of an expansion which promotes accessibility for the content for every player phase one will probably be a bit more on the shorter side due to this and things are really going to keep picking up for the expansion in Uldua and beyond i guess i just wanted to say in this video i'm really beginning to see why this game did so well back in the day and wanted to talk about how much i'm liking what it has to offer at the moment let me know your thoughts has wrath lived up to expectations expectations did you play it back in the day is it what you'd hoped it'd be or has it not met your expectations so far that will be everything from me today though as always thank you all so much for watching and to listening in and i'll see you all in the next one very soon all right so for those of you that have watched the video hey Stormprax. uh for those of you that have watched the video um has wrath lived up to its expectations so far are you enjoying it more than you thought you would? Or are you not enjoying it as much as you thought you would? Like, keep in mind, like for me personally, um, I think I'm, I think I'm enjoying it more than I thought I would. Um, but we'll see how long that lasts for. It could be just, hey, this is new. This is kind of fun. Let's see how it goes. I am getting tired of of doing heroics. In fact, I've stopped doing them daily. Like, I don't need any more Emblems of arrows, Heroism right now. Um, I will just keep doing the dailies and build them up slowly over time. Maybe I might do an extra um, Heroic here or there. But I'm not doing World Tours anymore on my main. I'm I'm absolutely done with that crap. <laughs> like, um, I'll do my dailies for the, uh, you know, for the Valor. But, um, you know, I, I, I don't know. Is, is there still stuff that I need? um emblems of hero heroism for like i know you can buy like uh um a couple of pieces of uh heirloom gear and stuff like that but for the most part i think i'm pretty much done i'm not doing world tours anymore i'm tired of it um tired of it i i did world tours like every single day uh how many of you guys are enjoying uh how many of you guys are enjoying how many of you are not enjoying wrath of lich king uh, already I only need to raid log on my main. I'm pretty much much at the point where I'm raid, raid logging on my main as well. But I'm, um, you know, like I said, I've, I've still got tons of stuff that I need to do. Like I've, I started out with 25, 26,000 gold. This is literally what I'm at right now. Not even 1500 gold left right now because I've, I've had to pay for all my tailors to get up to like, um, 400 and whatever it is, 415 tailoring. So that I can start making the um, do my do my uh, um, cloth cooldowns, but I've got seven of them done already, and now they're going to start pumping out this cloth that's going to make me a ton of gold. So I love Wrath Locks and Pallies are so fun to play. Uh, I haven't played a, a Paladin, but I'm really having a good time with my lock. Like really having a good time with my lock. I think Nax is a bit un underwhelming, but uh, overall the experience is fine. I mean, Nax is underwhelming, but I do personally, I love the layout of the Nax dungeon. I think it's absolutely amazing. It's just undertuned too much. Even, and they've actually buffed it, but it still feels too weak. So uh, the raids are a joke. We are one night clearing everything on 25. Yeah, I mean, we a, a lot of us, we did, uh, we did night one on Thursday night. It's not even our regular raid night. We went in. With our, our even our full raid, and full cleared everything uh, night one, it was just way too easy. Uh, my lock is <laughs> right now with four paladins. Uh, not too bad, but once I hit seventy six, I focused on farming to sell cards. Need to get epic flying, and just can't compete with the druids. You don't have epic flying yet. 
Now, is in a 75% nerf state. Uh, back in the day, uh, you were not stacking three horses and cleaving them down. I thought they they buffed Nax in Wrath compared to what it was like in uh, in original Wrath. Anyways, uh, another good video by uh, Willie. I don't know how far over I went my time, but um, definitely go to his. Uh, if you're watching this on YouTube, definitely go. I'll leave the links down below, but go to his channel. Um, subscribe to his channel if you haven't already. You should be. He's probably one of, if not the best content creators for uh, classic World of Warcraft. Give him a like. And if you enjoyed my commentary, of course, it would also help me if you subscribe to my channel and like my videos as well. I do stream six nights a week from 9 p.m. Eastern until extremely late. Um, as of right now, it's almost 8.30 in the morning right now, Eastern time. So... Um, and we've been up all night and we're going to keep going here. So anyways, if you want to continue talking about classic World of Warcraft, you can come watch my stream at twitch.tv slash Aladar. All the links will be down below. Thanks again for watching this video and we'll see you in the next one.